What's up everybody? Bartosz Kowalewski here and today we're going to be taking a look at the brand new C-Line DD3. Personally, I'm really excited about this one because the DD3 is one of my main distance drivers that I currently bag. The plastic feels exactly the same as the other FD and MD3 that just came out. And the couple that I got are fairly domey. They have slight to good dome, meaning if you can get it up to speed, you should get pretty good glide out of this disc going down the fairway. So without any further ado, let's check it out. So starting out, I'm throwing these discs not too hard on a little bit of hyzer, just trying to get a feel for them. You can see the Cloud Breaker 3, just a standard up and down shot. Nice disc to throw hyzer with. You can see not too big of a difference there between the C-Line and the Cloud Breaker. And I'm also throwing in the Enigma here. You can see it kind of flip up in the middle of its flight a lot more than either of the DD3s. Um, but at this lowish power, it's still gonna wanna come back left at the end. Um, next, I'm going similar power here, um, just throwing them a little bit more flat or maybe with a slight amount of Anheuser. The Neo Enigma definitely likes to fly on that Anheuser and it's gonna keep traveling right for the entirety of its flight. The Cloudbreaker 3 is going to fight out of that Anheuser about halfway through its flight before finishing left. And the C-Line DD3 also very similar. I threw this one a little lower than I wanted to, but you can still see it travels to the right before finishing left. Next, I'm gonna throw them a little harder back to a little bit of hyzer. And you can see at about 462 feet, that Enigma is just turning over and traveling to the right. Uh, it doesn't look like it's coming left anytime soon. The Cloudbreaker 3 is flipping up in the middle of its flight, but it still has a, a nice finish at the end. And the C line compared to the Cloudbreaker 3 is holding that straight flight in the middle of the flight for a longer period of time as opposed to the Cloudbreaker 3. Throwing these discs on four hands, um, the Enigma is going to be much more sensitive to the amount of power you put on it just because of how flippy it can be. You can see here the C line. I'm throwing it on Anheuser and it's still able to fight out of that power and come back down right. Cloudbreaker 3, pretty similar at this low power forehand. I can turn it over and it can reliably come back down right for me. And last, we're going to throw these discs a little harder. Still throwing them pretty flat with maybe a little bit of hyzer. And you can see like the Cloudbreaker 3 likes to flip up to flat in the middle of its flight again, still reliably finishing left at the end. And the C-Line DD3 just seems to have maybe a little bit more glide. It travels straighter in that mid section of the flight, really allowing you to get some long flights out of this disc. And the Enigma, going to be a little bit more power sensitive so I, I can't throw it as hard but you can see it kind of flip up and finish right. Next moving to some on the course shots. Um, anytime you have wide open space I'm going to be throwing this DD3 even on some forehands where I want to get some distance. You can see I put it on a little bit of an Anheuser uh, and is able to go through that tunnel. Shots like this, I really like this new DD3 just because it's so straight at a good amount of power and I can feel very confident in throwing it in those situations. Even on some shorter chip up forehands like this, just under 200 feet. 
Here you see me throwing it on a forehand, plenty of Anheuser angle and it's still able to fight back. I'm really enjoying this DD3 because it's the perfect stability right out of the box. It's not super overstable uh, and it's not super flippy. So I feel really confident throwing it both on the backhand and the forehand. And here you'll see me throwing it on an Anheuser and you can just can see how long it holds that, but still at the end of the flight, it finishes nicely. Personally, I'm really impressed with the flight of this disc. It's less stable than what I initially thought it would be, but that's a good thing. I'm able to throw this disc anywhere between 430 and 500 feet on the backhand pretty easily, getting those long S-shaped flight patterns. Pro players and amateur players with higher arm speeds are really going to be able to unlock the features of this disc, getting it to turn, getting that glide. Amateurs, beginners, and intermediate players might use this disc as more of a overstable distance driver because they might not be able to really throw the disc hard enough or get enough torque on the disc to be able to turn it and get that glide. I think that this is gonna be a big hit. A lot of people who throw the old S-Line DD3s are looking for those max distance flyers right out of the box. And this is it. It's a really good run of DD3 and I think that a lot of people are gonna like it. Don't forget to subscribe to the Disc Mania YouTube channel. You guys can like this video and comment if you wish, and I'll see you guys on the next one.